I'd like to share what happened yesterday in a service to encourage you to say the presence of God is so beautiful and so wonderful. Okay, first, because the son of Bishop, his name is Victory, he told me when I was coming to church in a car, he said, the first day I laid hand on him, he felt like electric current, electricity going through him. And then he asked God, can he experience that again? He wanted to be sure. And the second day he experienced that again. And so he knew that it was from God. And then, and I said, that's wonderful that you experience this. And I encourage him to keep that anointing, keep the strong presence of God. And then he also told me from childhood, he has seen visions. And, but then many people don't believe him. So, and then I, I said, you know, those visions can be very accurate from God, can be prophecy from God. And you want to develop that gift so that you can receive more accurately the visions and dreams and the words of God. And then so I asked him, can you share in the service? So he shared about his experience of the Holy Spirit, the power going in like electricity, and also about him seeing visions. And then I lay hand on him after he finished sharing. When I lay hand on him, something happened to him. He was, he stayed still. It's like he was in deep thought, not, you know, not responding normally. So I asked him what happened, and he didn't answer me. And later I asked him, he said he saw visions. And then he said he didn't want to say the visions uh, at that time. So we went home and asked him. But I will, I will tell you the visions later, okay? And then he, after his, you know, while he was sharing, and then I prayed with everyone and thank God for the work of God. And then people start experiencing the Holy Spirit. And one woman saw light from above shining on me and Bishop's head that the glory of God shining on us. And then, um, there were other people being moved by the Holy Spirit, greatly touched by the Holy Spirit. And also another daughter of Bishop called Goodness. She was totally out of herself. And then she started to speak words of the Lord, saying, I am coming back soon. Jesus will come back soon. Be ready. And then later while I was preaching, a young girl maybe about six, seven years old, told Bishop, and Bishop told me, give me a hand me a paper, and said that she saw a man with white gown, and we asked him, asked her later that is Jesus. And then she saw people, she saw the graveyard, and many dead people rise from the dead. Now that could be, could have two meanings. One meaning is, Jesus is going to revive the spiritual life of many people. Second, it could be the end time when Jesus comes back and then people rise from the dead. So I was sharing this yesterday. There were many people touched by the Holy Spirit. When people were open, when people were hungry. So I hope you all hunger for God. Don't be, you know, having no response, no feeling. That's what Jesus described the generation. He said, how can I describe this generation? That when we say that we play the foot and no one rejoices, and then when we beat the, beat the chest, no one shows sorrow. So Jesus was saying that this generation is like people have no response to God. And I hope you all, when you see the work of God, you say, I want to respond to God, I want to love God. Let me tell you, even if you have many problems, when you repent and love God, God will still like you very much and bless you. You don't have to be perfect, as I said yesterday. Even if you have a little good, whatever you do, you love God, you follow God, you obey God, and give a cup of cold water, God is very happy. 
Even if you have many weaknesses and you repent and ask God to help you, God will still be happy with you. So work on what you can do and repent of what you cannot do. And then God is very happy. So it's not hard to please God. So I hope you have this heart. Now, can you tap on the person next to you? There are some people closing the eyes, resting here. Now, I, we want to really love God, really love God and respond to God. And I respond to God all the time and I like God all the time and God pour blessings upon me all the time. So I hope you hunger for that. Do you hunger for that? Do not be without feelings, without response, but respond to God. Okay, so yesterday in the service, it was totally unexpected. What happened after victory share, and then the whole atmosphere changed. And then people were touched by the Holy Spirit, people were changed and saw visions, and there were more people who experienced the power of God, and then they share how they were changed by God. And then we went home and asked Victory, what did you see? He saw two persons going to face big danger. One person will die. One person will have an accident. So I said, please call these persons, people to come to the home. We'll counsel them and help them to overcome this problem. I'm, gonna say, I'm not going to say who they are, I just say what happened. So one lady came and she, I, I asked her, how's your relationship with God? And she said because of her pressure, her relationship with God is now very distant. So I said, to protect you, you need to build up the relationship and God wants to bless you. It's not difficult because God loves you. God cares about you. God wants good things to happen to you. And God is full of love even though we have failed in many ways. We trust in Jesus. He will bless you. And then I ask her, what are some problems you are facing? What are some sins you are facing? Because these are the foothold, footholds we gave to the devil. These are brick points in our lives that we gave footholds to the devil to attack. And that's why, actually, two weeks ago, someone saw that person die. And now, Bishop's son saw that person will die also. So two persons saw that. There must be something that has been handled. And this person said, because the children disobeyed her and disobeyed God, that they mix with bad people and she got very angry. And so her relationship with God is not good and she has a lot of anger. And I asked her, okay, does anger help? When you're angry with your children, do they obey more? Let me ask you here. If your parents are angry with you and yell at you, do you obey more? No. You become more rebellious. So I asked her, um, is there a way that we can have more peace and guide her to see that one point very important does God love the children yes. yes so God loves them God wants to do something but very often the parents are too mind the problems too much they get angry and they will yell at them and beat them and that actually destroy God's plan but when we live in the grace of God, that's why it's important to live in the grace of God. That you see each child as very important. You're important, you're important. And God loves you, God wants to do great things in your life. Always say this to your children. Now say this with me. God loves you. God loves you. You are very special. You are very special. God has a wonderful plan in your life. God has a wonderful plan in your life. God can do great things in your life. God can do great things in your life. Do you want to enter this perfect plan of God? Do you want to enter this perfect plan of God? And what can you do to enter the perfect plan of God? And what can you do to enter the perfect plan of God? Do you want to love God more? Do you want to love God more? Do you believe God is the one who can bless your life? Do you believe that God is the one that can bless your life? Do you want to trust in Jesus? Do you want to trust in Jesus? And build up a relationship with Jesus? Okay, so this is a way we guide them and let them know they are important. As I told you, 
You are important. You all are important. But if you don't respond to God, you won't enter the perfect plan. But if you respond to God and love God and obey Him and serve Him, you enter the plan of God, you go higher and higher. So, and I asked her, what happened, you know, what are happening to the children? Because of the children mixed with friends who are bad, therefore she got very angry and unhappy. And so I asked her, so anger doesn't help? She said no. So I encouraged her to tell her, God loves the children. The more peaceful you are, the more you can change them. But how can she be peaceful? We have to let go to a certain extent. When it is obeyed, we cannot take it on our heart. But we trust in God. God, you can do something. I just want to follow you and be peaceful and joyful. Now say this with me. I want to have a re good relationship with God. And have more peace and joy instead of yelling at the children and I love the children more I can change them more if I yell at them I cannot change them and it affects our spiritual life so I encourage this person let go to a certain extent you, you cannot change your children right away but if your children are young we can start with when they are young, it's easier. And when we love God, we have the presence of God, we're laying on them every day. If we have a good relationship with God and have no evil spirit and no sins, now, of course you say, we have some sins, but you take care of it right away. You take care of it right away. You take care of negative emotions and thinking. And then you are basically pure. You can lay hand on the children. From childhood, they experience the presence of God. And then you tell them, God is so real. Did you experience anything? They say yes. You know, yesterday I also prayed for a little child and she experienced a peace too. So she, the child can experience a peace and then you say, God loves you. So do you want to obey God and one day God will build you up to be a great person. And then if they're willing, you build up that relationship. Every day you have prayer with your children and you have a simple Bible study with the children. You can read over one verse and explain to them or Bible story to explain to them and then help the children instead of being angry. So she confessed her sin of being angry and I asked her also how to forgive. I said the key is to you know, ask her, as she said, another sin is unforgiveness because she get angry with people easily. So I asked her, okay, do you believe that people who hurt you, if this person hurt you, he has been hurt by many people. Now say it with me. People who hurt us, people who hurt us has been hurt by many people before. So they are unhappy. And so they hurt other people. So we have compassion on them. So we have compassion on them. We want to bless them. We want to bless them. We want to be nice to them. We want to, be nice we want to forgive them. We want to forgive them. I don't want to get angry with them. I don't want to get angry. I want to forgive them. I want to forgive them. So that's God's way. Instead of being angry, even though they do something bad to us, but if I get angry, it will hurt us, right? It will hurt us. So I want to have compassion and forgive. And I ask you, are you willing? So we pray together to have compassion on these people and to bless them and forgive them and she was willing to do that. And then I asked her again, what are the sins do you have? Now this sins, I realized that a number of people here have it. The sin of fornication, of sex before marriage. And I find out the reason is because it's very expensive to get married here. I heard that it costs 150 US dollars to get married, to get the marriage certificate. And many people don't have that money, and so they, they live together and without marriage, and the church cannot have the wedding for them, because if the church has a wedding for them, then uh, the bishop will get in trouble, and the government will get off to them. So this is a problem of, this, of the people here. Many don't have jobs. When I heard this, I asked, can the people here work on 
fields on agriculture to have income. The bishop said there's a difficulty because the difficulty is no money to lease the land, no money to buy the, the, uh, the holes and the equipment and to dig a well. So I told the bishop, okay, I will go back to Hong Kong. Tell me the estimate to have the minimum necessary to have a field, to lease a field for agriculture. How much does it cost? And I'll try to raise the money and send it here to support that. So there's some people who are very poor, even don't have money to get married, will work and have money, but it takes time for the crops to grow. You pray that the crops will grow. And then when it makes some money, then they can buy these a bigger field and have more crops so that more people can work and have more people hired. So that's what you know I can do for this country. We, if I just give you some money, it just, it's not going to solve it long term. You have to praise the Lord. We have to find a way that people can have income here. So I care about you as Jesus cares about you. And I pray that there will be people who are willing to give this money so that it's possible for some people to find work here, to work on the field, so that at least the people can get married to get a certificate. And also you will want to pray that the government and speak to the government to ask them to lower the fee of the marriage certificate so that many people who cannot get married because of money that they can get married. And then and I asked the lady, is it possible for you not to have sex before your marriage? You know, because fornication is against the will of God and give Satan a foothold. And she agrees to that. It's difficult. And then I said, what if the man disagreed? Then I asked her, can you say to the man, if you disagree that, we, that you cannot stop having sex, then I will ask you to leave until we have money to get married, but we cannot have sex now. We cannot have fornication. So that's to obey God. And we want to find ways to solve the problem of the people here. So she agrees to that. And then when victory pray again, she said, he said, her sins are forgiven. So there is new hope for that sister. And I want to say to all of you, if your life is full of anger, frustration, unforgiveness, fornication, adultery, or any kind of sin or bad relationship with God, please repent. Please come to God and repent. And I heard from the bishop that there are over 10 couples here in this church that cannot get married because of money problem. Then I will advise you not to have sex before marriage. And then you find ways, ask God to provide. If you obey God, God will open a way. I'm one way to help you, but there are other ways. God can open other ways. If you all pray together and love God together, God will be moved. God will give you blessings. You seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be given to you and God can bring prosperity to more and more of you. Do you want that? Yes. God is a solution, not Pastor Yip. Pastor Yip is one person who can help, but actually it's not from our organization because our organization cannot support so much. We only support mission work. We cannot support this is welfare. But I'm going to try to talk to some Christians to raise the money for the agriculture so that more money can have more people can have money to, to serve God and to have marriage and have a normal life and so I when I heard this problem I care about you I love you I want the best to happen to you and I hope you all believe say it together our help is from God our help is from God when we love God when we love God, have a good relationship with God, I have a good relationship with God. and 
will seek His kingdom. We will seek His kingdom. We want more people saved. We want more people saved. We want Jesus to be our Lord. We want Jesus to be our Lord. And obey God. And obey and serve God. God. So God. God is happy with us. God is happy. And He will pour blessings upon our lives. And He will pour blessings upon our lives. And will provide for us. And will provide for us. And will raise us up. And will raise us to a higher level. To a higher level. The answer is from God. The solution is from God. I need to trust in God. I need to hold on to God every day. God will answer our prayer. Do you believe that? So pray for this country. Pray for the people that we can bring some changes to this society, to this country. God bless Liberia. So what happened is, Victory prayed and then saw that this lady, the sins was forgiven, and then she set free. But she need to fast for three days to have real repentance and really follow God and obey God. And then I talked to Victory afterwards. You have the gift of seeing visions. Let me ask you, how many of you have seen visions and also dreams of God, not just ordinary dreams, but dreams, godly dreams, or hear from God, or have ideas that came from God. Can you raise your hand? Okay, very good. Now, if you obey God, you hear from God more. So I talked to Victory. This is a great gift, but it's not greater than other gifts. We don't say this is greater than other gifts. No gift is greater than others. We just want to build up the church, love the Lord. We don't say, oh, people receive prophecy are greater than others. We don't say that. But I told him, this is a special gift. And then he said he was afraid because he saw people going to die. But I said, just now, you see how we counsel the person and the person's life is saved, that she did not have to die. So the gift is not just seeing people dying, but we can save these people from dying. And so I said, this is wonderful. And also in the future, God can raise you up as a prophet. You can build up the church. You can build up the Christians around you. First, you can do evangelism. You can pray for people, and then you know the needs and the problem, and you tell them. And these people will be surprised. How come you know my problems and needs? And then they can tell the person. Because Jesus knows your needs, and Jesus let me know. So you know Jesus knows your needs. So you want Jesus to believe in you. So that's evangelism by prophetic gift. I say this again. When you have the prophetic gift and you pray for the people around you, your neighbors, you just you can pray yourself. And then God reveals to you one neighbor, one friend, one family member has certain problem. And then you go to this person. And then you say to this person, I pray for you. And I receive this message about you. Can I tell you this message? And the person says, says yes. And then you tell the person what God has revealed. Now first, they have to test it. Many times in the church with Christians to test it if it is true. And then if they receive more and more accurate messages. In order to receive accurate messages, we have to spend more time praying, waiting for the Lord, have quiet time waiting for the Lord, and take care of our sins and worries and anger, all this problem. And then we can hear from God more accurately and drive out the demons. And then they receive accurately and then they can go to this person. Or when they talk with someone, they can say, can I pray for you? And then receive the message and say to the person, I received this message, is this true? And if the person says it's true, then we can tell them. Because God knows your problems, so God tell, told me, and so I can tell you. And you see that God is so good, do you want to believe in Jesus? And let Jesus bless you. So this is evangelism by prophetic gift. If you have that gift, treasure that. That's the first step. And the next step, you ask for God's blessing on the church. And then they receive the message, okay, certain people have to take care of the problems, or how the church can grow, and then receive the message, when that is used, to that these people have their problems taken care of, and they have sins, anger, frustration, fornication, adultery, all these problems taken care of, 
and how the church can grow and then it can bring growth to the church. And the next level is go to different churches and train people to have prophetic gift and build up prophets and to bring revival to the church and how to bring blessings to the country and also even go international to different countries. So we can go one step at a time. If you love God, God will raise you up. If you just say to God, God, I want to follow your will. Do you want to follow God's will? Yes, sir. So I encourage victory. He can follow that will. And he starts to see that. That is something great for him. And he, when he heard this, he wept. And I asked him why he wept. He said, this is so new to me. That he didn't realize that his gift can be so powerful. And when he heard that, he wept. So you too. Let me ask you this morning. When you hear that God can do so much. And God can bless this country. Do you want to enter God's plan? Do you want to repent of your anger for your children, for your husband and wife? Do you repent of unforgiveness, repent of fornication and adultery or laziness or any kind of sins? Do you want to repent? Do you want to say, God, I want to follow your plan and obey you and be used by God to bring blessings to this country? Because in 2 Chronicles 7.14 When the people who are called by my name, they will humble themselves and they pray to me and they seek my face and then they will turn away from their sinful ways. I will hear them from heaven, I will forgive them and I will heal their land. So do you believe that? Yes. God can heal this land. When we all come in repentance to God and obey Him and love Him. He is Almighty God. He can do these things. My blessings all came from God. Let me tell you, when my, when my first wife died, I almost used up all my money. But God knows that I love Him. The blessings keep coming. Until now, I can go to different nations. Because God has a plan for each person. A wonderful plan and also when I submit to God and this 10 years after I experienced the Holy Spirit God has guided me to take care of different problems to be humble to take care of sins and negative thinking negative emotions not to be affected by people how to overcome all negative effect by people then I my life begin to be raised up and go a high level do you want your life to go higher? Yes. Do you believe that when you love God, God can bless you? Yes. Let me ask you, how many people here that you say that you really love God and you have seen blessings in your life? Can you raise your hand? How many people you really love God and you see God start to bless you financially and in different ways bring, bring blessings to you? Wow, look around. Raise your hand high up. High up if you have experienced blessings like that. Hold your hands. Okay. So all, raise your hand if you have experienced blessings when you obey God. Would you raise your hand? So you see so many people experience God's blessing. So I hope you remember this and continue to love God and obey God. And you have blessings more and more. Hallelujah. Amen. So you have experienced God, I hope you remember that. And don't put it down. Don't forget it. And follow God. Those who say, yes, Lord, I want to follow your perfect plan. I want to repent of all sins and follow your perfect plan. Can you raise your hand to God? I want to enter your perfect plan. And can you stand up to God and pray to God together? Lord Jesus. Forgive our sins. Forgive our sins. Forgive our sins of anger. Forgive our sins of anger. And forgiveness. And forgiveness. Our sins of distant relationship with you. Our sins of distant relationship with you. That we don't love you and trust you. That we don't love you and trust you. 
and forgive our sins of fornication and adultery. Please forgive our sins. Please forgive our sins. And wash us clean with the blood of Jesus. And wash us clean with the blood of Jesus. Give us eternal life. Give us eternal life. And bless our whole life. And bless our whole life.